Hi, welcome to my topic circuits and networks. And today we are going to deal with transient analysis. This is one of the important topic in circuits and networks. Most of the students find difficulty in order to frame the equations pertaining to the circuits which are involved with inductors and capacitors. The timing which is involved in order to form the equation is of importance. So let us see the basics which are involved under transient response. So this particular class you are going to treat as class 1. In later classes, we are going to see further development in the transient analysis as well as we are going to solve different numericals pertaining to transient analysis in series as well as parallel circuits. So as you can see in this two circuits where you have input voltage, you have a switch. The switch you can see it is open and the direction of S it is shown as closed in both the conditions whether it is inductor or capacitor. In both the cases in RL or RC circuit, R is the dissipating element. Okay, You can also have the absence of R over here such that voltage can be directly connected to inductor, voltage can be connected to the capacitor. So for understanding we have just replaced the simple L circuit or C circuit with RL and RC where I of T is the transient current equation which is has to be framed. So when inductor has the current passing through it, it develops the voltage across it. Similarly, when capacitor is having a current IC, then the voltage will be developed across capacitor which is VC. And this is the indication of current source and this is the indication of voltage source. So how these all equations are related to transient analysis and how this analysis can be understood with the different waveforms we are going to see under class 1. So first of all, in general, in any system output response, uh, it is composed of two states. What is the state states? That is called as steady state response and transient response. A steady state response is a response whose amplitude and frequency remains the same. Whereas transient response is a response that changes with time. So as I already told you, the transient in electrical and transfer depends upon the passive elements, especially the energy storing elements. So what are those passive elements? We know that the elements which receive energy from active sources are termed as passive elements. So we have examples of passive elements as resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Resistors are helpful in a circuit to dissipate the energy. So the main cause for transients in electrical and electronic circuits are because of inductors and capacitors. Inductor stores energy in magnetic form, capacitors stores energy in electrostatic form. So when you look at uh, the amplitude and frequency curve, you have a uh, sinusoidal input, whether it is current waveform, voltage waveform or power waveform. If it or it is repeated along with the time in this fashion, that is, though there is a change in time, the amplitude of the waveform is not changed. So this kind of response can be treated as steady state response. A constant voltage can also be said to be a steady state when there is no variation with time. When you look back at another graph, that is a uh, waveform which is in this fashion or the waveform which is in this fashion, these waveforms are varying along with the time. So this variation can be treated as the transient response, whereas this constant which is no change with time can be treated as steady state response. I hope you have understood the basics of variations of waveforms under transient and steady state. Let us involve with inductor. Inductor, we know that when current is flowing through the inductor, the voltage will be developed across inductor according to Faraday's law, which is equal to L di by dt. So di is nothing but I, the inductor current which is flowing through it. That's why we have changed it to VL is equal to L di L by dt. When you want to know the value of current, mathematically it can be obtained as 1 by L integration VL dt. From equation 1, it is clear that if a DC quantity flows through an inductor, the differential component becomes 0 and hence voltage across the inductor becomes 0. Therefore, we can say in steady state, the inductor behaves as short circuit. 
is a very important property of the inductor. When we look at the equation 2, the definite integral limits ranges from minus infinity to t of required time period. So let us assume the switching action that takes place at t equal to 0. So the integral in equation 2 can be substituted as t equal to minus infinity to 0 means what the past history and t equal to 0 to t the present history. With this we can easily obtain the conditions for current through the inductor. So I am taking the equation 2 which is IL is equal to 1 by L B dt. So we are applying the limits, the finite limit conditions. So 1 by L minus infinity to t. Minus infinity indicates the time along with it has traveled since the past. So the past history is indicated by minus infinity to the present it is t. Now this is further divided into two intervals. You can see here 1 by L minus infinity to 0 minus. 0 minus indicates that this is before switching. Means what? The switch it is open and just about at t equal to 0 when the switch is closed. So before it is getting closed that we are treating as 0 minus time instant. Okay. Then the interval again it is changing from 0 minus to t. So what is going to happen from 0 minus to t? That is taken as another equation. Now what we have to keep in our mind? That the interval, the instant just before the switching action takes place is regarded as t equal to 0 minus. And the instant just after the switching action takes place is regarded as 0, t is equal to 0 plus. So how do we do this? So when circuit is open, this is how the circuit is look alike. And the circuit is closed, this is how the circuit should look alike. Now this is for infinite conditions and this is for before conditions. So actually inductor behavior is obtained due to these analysis. So we know that equation 4, IL we have obtained as 1 by L minus infinity to 0 minus VL dt plus 1 by L 0 minus 2T VL dt. Now before the switch was closed, it is open when the switch was completely open. Inductor and, inductor and resistor, they were not connected to the source. So the behavior of this can be treated as IL of 0 minus. That is, the past history from minus infinity to 0 minus can be treated as IL of 0 minus. Okay. Plus 1 by L, 0 minus 2T VL dt. Now this is a general equation of the inductor or current which is flowing through the inductor. Now this general equation is very important in order to derive the transient current through the inductor. So remember this formula, often we are going to use this formula in order to obtain the current through the inductor or the transient current of the circuit. Now at t equal to 0 plus, what at t equal to 0 plus indicate? It indicates just after the switching. So as we know that the inductor behavior, it is not going to change instantaneously or we can prove that it is not going to change instantaneously. We know that the past history, the inductor is carrying no energy. So the current through the inductor was 0. So naturally at t equal to 0 plus also, IL of 0 plus will be equivalent to, from this equation, IL of 0 minus plus 1 by L, 0 minus to 0 plus VL dt, this value is nothing but 0. Because the required time interval is what? From 0 minus to t. Now t is I am taking as 0 plus, so 0 minus to 0 plus, the circuit behavior is not going to get changed. So in fact, we have assumed that the switch is open in 0 time, thus the integration from t equal to 0 minus to t equal to 0 plus is 0. And hence we are going to get IL of 0 plus is equal to IL of 0 minus, which is 1 and the same. The values will be 1 and the same. And therefore, we can state that current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. Now this is another important point which we need to remember when you are dealing with inductor. Now the time of switching the voltage across inductor is ideally infinity as the time interval dt is 0 thus at the time of switching inductors acts as open circuit. So the time of switching the inductor acts as open circuit. If the inductor carries a current I0 before switching action, then at t equal to 0 plus it acts as a 
constant current source of value I naught. So these two points we have to remember. In steady state, that is at t equal to infinity, it acts as short circuit across the current source. So how do we understood that? Let us take this element. So inductor element is there. So inductor element at t equal to zero plus when it is open circuit. So this inductor is treated in this fashion. And as the t approach to the infinity, inductor becomes short circuit. So these conditions are for what? These conditions if the inductor is not initially energized. Inductor is not initially energized, then these conditions holds good. Now if the inductor is already charged, means what? There is a current which is flowing through the inductor and voltage has already developed in the inductor. Then how does this inductor behave at t equal to zero plus? It behaves as the constant current source. It behaves as the constant current source. This is very important. So what are the value of the inductor current is there that we need to take into account as soon as that switch is closed. When inductor is energized. When an inductor is not energized, then it becomes open circuit. But when an inductor is energized, then it becomes a constant current switch. And what is the lateral condition at t equal to infinity? It behaves like a current source, but the shorted condition. So when you are going to solve different numericals, then you will be able to understand the exact behavior of inductor when it is charged and uncharged before time t equal to 0 and after time t equal to 0. So as of now, you remember these cases. This tabular column is important. Please this, uh, keep in your mind about this tabular column. Now let us see the capacitor behavior. We know that the capacitor current when flows through it, it develops a voltage Vc. Now what is the current which is flowing through the capacitor? It is C dB by dt. And the voltage developed will be 1 by C integration IC dt. Now it is clear that if a DC quantity flows through the capacitor, the differential component becomes 0 and hence current through capacitor becomes 0. Therefore, in steady state, capacitor behaves as open circuit. Unlike in the previous case of inductor, capacitor behaves as open circuit. So you have to take the limit conditions. I am taking here the limit condition again from minus infinity to t. So the equation what we have taken from 2 is nothing but 1 by c integration ic dt. So applying the limits for final conditions minus infinity to t, dividing the integral parameters from minus infinity to 0 minus that is just before switching plus 1 by c integration 0 minus 2t ICDT this are after the switching condition this is after the switching conditions so this equation is very important now capacitor is open and capacitor is closed so how does the behavior look like we know that the equation from 4 that Vc is equal to 1 by C minus infinity to 0 minus ICDT plus 1 by C 0 minus 2t ICDT now this we can treat as equation Vc is equal to Vc of 0 minus plus 1 by C, integration 0 minus to T, I Z D T. Now this is another important equation but that we need to remember for under capacitor conditions. Now at T equal to 0 plus means what? The behavior of the switch before closing and after closing, the voltage will remain as it is. So this component will goes off from equation 6. So we are going to have Vc of 0 plus is equal to Vc of 0 minus just before and after switching conditions. And voltage across capacitor cannot change instantaneously like in the case of inductor the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously likewise the voltage across capacitor cannot change instantaneously these are two important points we need to remember now if that is true at the time of switching the current through the capacitor is ideally zero as the time interval dt is infinity thus at the time of switching capacitor acts as short circuit unlike the inductor condition so if the capacitor carries an initial voltage V0 before switching action, then at t equal to 0 plus it acts as a constant voltage source of value V0. And in steady state at t equal to infinity, it acts as open circuit in series with a voltage source. So how do we look at this particular statement? So you can see element C we have taken. This is under short circuit and for t which tends to find at the open circuit becomes like this. If the capacitor is charged initially with Vc, then it will be behaving as 
a constant voltage source at t equal to 0 plus and as t tends to infinity we can assume to be the voltage source is in series with open circuit condition. So this is how the transient behavior of capacitor is understood under steady state and transient analysis. So in today's class we have seen the basics of inductor and capacitors. Remember the tabular column. Again when we are going to go with class 2 we will take these basics and then we will apply these basics for further analysis in order to determine the initial conditions, the current conditions, the voltage conditions and at different in instant of time if the values of inductors and capacitors are changed how does the transient behavior is obtained that is what that is what we are going to learn in further classes so i hope you like my video please share among your friends subscribe to this channel and please press the bell icon for future notifications thank you